may be possible to open up these things. But uh, on Earth, um, unless, unless they tell us the energy source, you know, unless they tell us how to build the, the gasoline, so to speak, right, uh, you, you can give, for example, you know, Aborigines the blueprint of a car, but unless you tell them that it, it, it's supplied by gasoline, uh, the car's not going to go anywhere. That's right. That, that it takes energy. It All right, well, let, let's, for the sake of a, this conversation, let us say that we had the available energy and we created something like a Stargate. Mm -hmm. uh, what assurance do we have that the other end, of course, they landed on a nice sandy planet somewhere or another, what assurance do we have that we would land anywhere at all? Wouldn't the great likelihood be that we would land in the vacuum of space someplace? Uh, yeah, you would have to open up the Stargate in a very careful way Indeed. so that you know where the other end is going going to be. Or, so, or you'd end up in the middle of a planet or a sun. Or a star or, or something like that. Right? No. You don't want to wind up in the middle of another sun someplace. So that's why you know you would have to solve these equations in a very precise way that at the present time we're not smart enough. You know the equations are well defined. We're not smart enough. No one on Earth, no physicist on Earth, is yet smart enough to solve all these equations to give you all the predictions as to what happens when space warps and and holes open up and stuff like that. Okay. One other Back question: uh, Would it once opened? Theoretically, would it remain open to come from the other side to this side? Okay, now, this is where there's some debate among physicists. Um, it used to be thought they were one-way gateways. There is something called the event horizon, as you mentioned earlier. The yes. event horizon is an imaginary line. There's nothing there, really. But it's a point of no return. So if you go through the event horizon, through the Kerr uh, metric, as we call it, then you would not be able to come back because of the event horizon. However, a new class of solutions was discovered about seven years ago, again, out of Caltech. And these are called transversible wormholes. And again, if you want to see them, you can look up physical review letters. It's, all the mathematics is published in physical review letters, which is the most prestigious physics magazine on the planet Earth. I've got to ask you to stay good and close to your phone. Yeah. And when we, when they did this, they found that you could get transversible wormholes. That is, you go back and forth. Uh -huh. They have no event horizon. Which was quite quite astonishing. Every, that, that that dispelled the old idea that black holes are one-way streets. You can go to Alpha Centauri, but you'll never be able to come back. If these transversible wormholes hold up, then yeah, two-way travel is possible. Uh, <clears throat> there have been many things ascribed to the paranormal that were kind of like that, uh, seeming holes that opened up, uh, places from which creatures that we can't identify may have come, uh, ships. Uh, in the Bermuda Triangle that have entered areas that seem to defy explanation with spinning compasses and strange fogs and otherworldly surroundings and then suddenly bush your back. Could these be evidence of those? Uh, in principle, yes. In practice, of course, it would, it would take some... Not um, created by us. Not created yeah. by us. It, it would not be created by us because if it were created by us, somebody would have won the Nobel Prize already, already. and, and sure. gone to Stockholm and, and got all the accolades of the next Einstein, right? Uh, but, yeah, it's conceivable that, again, a type 2 civilization would have energies on the scale of about 10 billion times the, the energy on the Earth, in which case they could begin to manipulate stars, small stars, and that would be sufficient to begin to open up event horizons. And, in fact, there's even a movie that is coming out called Event Horizon. certainly they, is. They, in fact, I've, I've been asked to consult with several movie companies uh, concerning these wormholes and things. Um, so, in principle, a lot of the paranormal stuff, uh, things disappearing, reappearing, uh, gateways and whatever, could be explained by hyperspace if, and this is a very big if, you have energy. Okay, it's not what the time machine looks like so much. It's the gasoline that energizes the time machine. You see, uh, you don't have to have as H.G. Wells had this atom-like looking object, and you energize it, and you go backwards or forwards in time. It's the energy. That's the bottleneck. That's the weak link in the whole chain. In 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 our creation of it. But uh, if we assume that we have seen such things, or such things have been seen, then we might theorize somebody else has got it. That's right. It would have to be somebody, at least a, a type 2 civilization. Okay. And again, I believe they're out there, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm not convinced they've actually physically visited us because they would have sent probes to us first, right? However, they're, I think they're obviously out there. 
And uh, if they want to go between star systems, uh, flying saucer is just not the way to do it. That's the old-fashioned way of doing it. The the new way of doing it is with gateways, you know, stargates, basically. All right. You know. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Dr. Kaku. Hi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Where are you? Uh, try to bear with me. I'm a layman. I will. Where are you? Kansas. Okay. Uh, doctor, if, uh, in, in relating to energy, I, I think of light speed E equals MC squared. When you magnify your vision by looking through a telescope and you look at an object out in space, do you not see things as they are happening at a distance? In other words, you can see actually faster than the speed of light would take for that image to get to you? Um, not quite. You're looking actually backwards in time because light is slow on an astronomical scale. It takes about a second for light to go to the moon, for example. Right. It takes about eight minutes for light to go to the sun, right. and it takes about a day for light to go to Pluto, and it takes about four years for light to go to Alpha Centauri. So when you look at the night sky, the most of the light that you see is about 100 years old looking at the night sky. Even look at the Milky tele- Way. That's even? about 10,000 years old, 10 oh. to 50,000 years old. Okay, even. even through a telescope. Uh, yeah. Uh, so even just with the naked eye, you would see things like the Milky Way galaxy about 50,000 light years away. With a telescope, a telescope simply concentrates old light. So it doesn't make light younger or it doesn't make light instantaneous. It simply concentrates old light, fossil light. You realize that light from <laughs> outer space is older than the dinosaurs, some of them. Okay. The okay. Then, light. if if you were to fire a laser through a telescope, it can't reach its destination faster than normal light speed. Uh, that's right. If you were to fire a laser beam to the moon, uh, it would make an image about five miles across. That's a that's a calculation we give our physics PhD candidates to to calculate oh, really? the size of a laser beam on the moon. So, uh, a pocket laser fired at the moon would create an image about five miles across. Very dim, of course. But, but it, it would, would not take... get there faster than normal travel no. by being... Uh, it, it would travel at the speed of light. Uh, laser light is nothing but coherent red light coming from helium neon. So it would travel at the speed of light. At the speed of light. At All right, Doctor, uh, hold tight. We'll be right back to you. My guest is Dr. Michio Kaku from the uh, city of New York University. Uh, we're privileged indeed to have him here. And if you have a question, we've got... Uh, no open lines. <laughs> They're all going. But uh, try as you might, get in, and we will continue to ask him questions for as long as his eyelids remain open. I'm Art Bell, and this is Coast to Coast AM. All right. Uh, doctor, I want to read a fax to you, and this will be a kind of a critical fax and see how you respond to sure. it. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Art, if your guest would just check the fax, he would find there is no global warming. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the average temperature has decreased by 0.3 degrees this century. Uh, this has been verified by NASA weather satellites. There is no way that CFCs can destroy the ozone layer because... They're heavier than air. DuPont funded a flawed study in order to force everyone to use their new product since their Freon was going off patent. Their new refrigerant gas will be outlawed when that one goes off patent, too. Do you think it's a coincidence? The space shuttle does more damage to the ozone layer than anything we could possibly do. Active volcanoes in the world do far more to add to add hot gases to our atmosphere than we could ever hope to do with our little automobiles. From Ken in Kansas City, how would you answer that? Uh, First of all, the Nobel Prize in chemistry was given to those people who worked out how Freon and CFCs destroy the ozone layer. Uh, As far as ozone depletion is concerned, that's a fact. It's uh, not a question of speculation or theory. Now, global warming, on the other hand, as this person pointed out, is a theory. It still has not been verified once and for all. However, I was in Greenland about uh, 10 years ago, and I had the chance to look at people drilling into the Arctic ice sheet. They go, you know, almost a mile down, and they pick up ice that's uh, over 100,000 years old. And I saw them extracting ice bubbles, little tiny bubbles inside the ice, and 